There are places in the universe so distant that light itself struggles to tell their story. 5.8 billion light years away, in a cluster of galaxies blazing with ancient fire, lies a darkness larger than imagination, a black hole so immense that even language trembles before it. Astronomers call it Phoenix A, the supermassive heart of the Phoenix Cluster, a cosmic city of galaxies glowing against the backdrop of time. Yet, supermassive hardly captures what Phoenix A is. This thing at the cluster's core is ultra-massive, a black hole estimated to weigh more than 100 billion times the mass of the Sun. It is not simply a hole in space. It is a region of collapsed reality, a place where gravity has eaten geometry, where time flows inward and where energy is torn from the fabric of being itself. Around it, galaxies orbit like fireflies around a storm. Jets of plasma stream outward at near light speed, carving cavities in the intergalactic medium, vast scars visible across millions of light years. And yet, in the same moment that Phoenix A devours, it also creates. Just beyond its reach, stars are being born in furious numbers. A starburst, hundreds of times more active than our own Milky Way's gentle rhythm. It is a paradox so deep it borders on poetry. From the heart of destruction, creation blooms. To grasp the scale of Phoenix A, we must first understand what we mean when we speak of mass. Our sun, vast, fiery, ancient, contains 99.8% of the solar system's mass. Multiply that by 100 billion and you approach the heft of Phoenix A. That mass is packed into a region smaller than our solar system, a singularity so dense that even the concept of surface loses meaning. Here, gravity is not merely strong, it is absolute. At its event horizon, the invisible boundary where escape becomes impossible, space bends so steeply that all paths curve inward. Light, time and meaning collapse together. And yet, somehow, the Phoenix Cluster is alive with light. While Phoenix A consumes gas and dust with insatiable hunger, the energy released from this process floods the cluster with radiation. The black hole's accretion disk, a spinning maelstrom of matter heated to billions of degrees, glows so brightly that it can outshine entire galaxies. That light travels across almost six billion years of space and time to reach us. When we see it, we are looking back into an era when the universe itself was younger, denser, and more alive. We are seeing not only a monster, but a message, a record of cosmic extremes written in gravity. Black holes are supposed to suppress star formation. Their energy blasts outward, heating gas and preventing it from collapsing into new suns. In the language of astrophysics, they are quenchers, cosmic regulators that keep galaxies from growing uncontrollably. But Phoenix A defies that logic. Despite its ravenous appetite, the Phoenix Cluster is in the midst of one of the most violent star-forming events ever observed. Stars are igniting by the hundreds every year, fed by the same reservoir of gas that fuels the black hole's hunger. It's as though the system has found a delicate balance between chaos and creation, where feedback from the black hole does not quench the fire, but fans it. Scientists do not yet understand how this is possible. Some suspect that Phoenix A's jets, instead of dispersing gas, are compressing it, triggering star formation in dense filaments that weave around the black hole's influence. Others think we may be catching the system in a brief, unstable moment, a snapshot of cosmic contradiction that cannot last. Whatever the truth, Phoenix A reminds us that the universe is rarely tidy. Its rules are written in complexity, its beauty in paradox. The same forces that destroy can also give birth, and sometimes the brightest lights grow nearest to the deepest shadows. Every black hole begins with collapse. A massive star exhausts its fuel, its core implodes, and gravity wins. The result is a singularity, a one-way door out of existence. But Phoenix A is not the corpse of a single star. It is a god of collapse, a being made of millions of such endings stacked atop one another. How does something so vast come to be? Our current models of black hole growth can only stretch so far. Typically, a black hole forms at the heart of a young galaxy and grows by consuming gas, dust, 
and the occasional unlucky star. Over billions of years, it might reach a few billion solar masses. The scale of the monsters we know, like the one in our Milky Way, Sagittarius A. But Phoenix A weighs nearly a hundred billion solar masses. That's too big, too fast, too soon. According to every simulation, there simply hasn't been enough time in the universe's history for a black hole to grow that large by ordinary feeding. So how did it happen? Some scientists suggest Phoenix A was born from a direct collapse, not from a single star, but from an entire cloud of primordial gas, a million suns worth of material collapsing in one impossible motion. Others imagine it grew from a chain of galactic mergers, each bringing its own central black hole, fusing one into another until a single titan remained. Perhaps it's both. Perhaps Phoenix A is a relic of the universe's most violent youth, a survivor from an era when gravity had fewer rules and time itself was still molten. In astrophysics, we like to think our equations can hold the universe. We describe black holes with elegant symbols, mass, spin, accretion, feedback, each a neat piece of cosmic machinery, but Phoenix A refuses to fit. Its existence is a kind of rebellion, it should have long ago exhausted the gas around it, yet it continues to feed. It should have stopped star formation, yet new suns are blazing nearby. It should have taken eons to grow, yet it already towers over every known scale. When astronomers first measured its mass, they double-checked, then they checked again. The data they found was real, its gravity unmistakable. We call it ultra-massive, but that's a placeholder for we don't yet understand. It forces us to confront a possibility we rarely say aloud, that the cosmos is not fully mapped, that our physics may be missing a deeper language. Black holes were once thought to be the ultimate endpoints of understanding, but each discovery like Phoenix A reminds us they are beginnings. They are laboratories of impossible physics, where matter, energy, and space-time dance in ways our mathematics cannot yet follow. To look at Phoenix A is to look back in time. Its light began its journey toward us almost six billion years ago, before Earth had continents as we know them, before life had even reached the shore. When that light left its source, the universe was half its current age, and in that light astronomers see patterns that echo even earlier epochs. The Phoenix Cluster seems to be a kind of fossil, a miniature model of what the universe's first galaxy clusters might have looked like. Gas flows inward toward its heart, cooling and condensing into filaments that spiral around the central black hole. It's a cosmic weather system, a storm powered by gravity and cooled by radiation, a living record of how galaxies once grew. To study Phoenix A is to peer into the physics of creation itself. The same processes that feed it may mirror those that built the first stars and galaxies out of the primordial dark, and perhaps though we cannot yet prove it, there is something in its behavior that hints at a deeper connection between black holes and the birth of structure in the universe. It's as if hidden beneath the equations, the cosmos is whispering a secret, that what we call destruction is also the seed of creation, that the same engine driving collapse might also be the one that drives life to exist at all. Every galaxy is built around a black hole, we used to think the relationship was simple. The galaxy forms first, the hole grows in its center, and the two coexist. But observations of Phoenix A and its kin have inverted that story. The evidence suggests the black hole may be the architect, not the tenant. Its gravity dictates how gas cools, where stars ignite, and how vast jets carve corridors through intergalactic space. In the Phoenix Cluster, you can see that architecture. Two colossal cavities gape in the surrounding plasma, each large enough to swallow our Milky Way, hollowed out by radio jets that erupted from Phoenix a millions of years ago. Those voids act like cosmic lungs. As they expand, they push material outward. Then the displaced gas cools and rains back toward the center, feeding both the hole and the starburst around it. The cycle repeats, a cosmic heartbeat. From that pulse comes structure. From that structure, galaxies. Phoenix A does not merely consume, it sculpts. There is an old paradox in cosmology. Why is the universe filled with so much light, 
when its engines are made of darkness? Black holes like Phoenix A give us the answer. When matter falls toward the event horizon, it releases energy with an efficiency that dwarfs any other process known. A spoonful of gas spiraling toward that abyss can radiate more power than a million nuclear detonations. It is gravity turned inside out, destruction becoming brilliance. In the Phoenix Cluster, that brilliance is everywhere. X-rays blaze from the core, radio waves ripple through the hot gas, infrared telescopes trace the birth of new stars. The very act of being devoured lights up the universe. For astronomers, this is both a spectacle and a problem. It means that creation and annihilation are not opposites, but partners. Every star owes its existence somewhere in the chain of cause to a force that destroys. Phoenix A embodies that truth, a cosmic Ouroboros endlessly consuming its own tale of light. We speak confidently of event horizons and accretion disks, but these are metaphors standing in for ignorance. No one has ever seen a singularity. No probe could survive the tidal forces near one. Even light cannot tell us what happens beyond the boundary where escape speed equals the speed of light. Phoenix A, so far away and so immense, reminds us how much of the universe is inference. We do not observe the thing itself. We observe the consequences of its gravity, the way it bends space, the way it sculpts radiation. It is like studying the shape of a wind by watching how it moves the grass. Yet there is beauty in that distance. Science advances not by banishing mystery, but by learning to ask better questions of it. Phoenix A is one such question. How can something so heavy still be incomplete in our equations? What happens to the information that falls inside? Is a black hole truly an end or a bridge to some deeper structure of reality? Each new telescope, each simulation is an act of faith that the universe is knowable. Each discovery, like Phoenix A, is a reminder that it is also stranger than we can yet know. Black holes are the universe's patience made visible. Stars live for billions of years, but even they are brief sparks compared with the ages of gravity. Phoenix A will outlast them all. Long after the Phoenix Cluster's brightest galaxies fade, when their stars have burned their hydrogen and their remnants drift cold through the void, Phoenix A will remain. It will keep feeding on whatever matter wanders too close. Gas, rogue planets, the occasional dying sun. Each meal will make it still heavier, still darker. In 10 trillion years, when the cosmic night has deepened and the last red dwarfs flicker out, the cluster will be a graveyard of light. Phoenix A will sit at its center like a silent king, radiating faint hawking photons leaking energy so slowly that entire civilizations could rise and fall before a single gram escapes. Given enough eons, even that decay will win. The black hole will evaporate particle by particle until it releases its final whisper of radiation, a ghost sighing back into the vacuum. What began as collapse will end as light once more. From our small world, 5.8 billion light years away, Phoenix A is a smudge on a detector, a pattern in data. And yet, through that smear of photons, we reconstruct enormity. We know its mass, its distance, its appetite. We can trace the jets that reach beyond galaxies, feel their echo in radio waves caught by dishes on a desert plain. This is the quiet triumph of a species that learned to turn curiosity into instruments. A creature whose brain once feared the dark now measures it. We will never visit Phoenix A. No probe will ever return from its edge, but we can imagine it, model it, name it. In that act of naming, we bridge the impossible scale between the human and the cosmic. We are not outside the universe watching from safety. We are inside it, made of the same atoms that fall eventually into such holes. The carbon in our cells will one day drift through space, pulled by gravity towards something like Phoenix A. We are already participants in its story. Stand beneath a night sky and look toward the constellation Phoenix. Somewhere behind those stars, far beyond the reach of any light we will ever see, that black hole waits. It neither knows nor cares that we have found it. And yet, by finding it, we have enlarged ourselves. 
Phoenix A is not merely an object, it is an idea, the point where human reason meets the limits of comprehension. It reminds us that the universe is not built for our comfort, it is built for astonishment. Every photon we catch from that distant cluster is ancient, older than our species, older than the continents. Each one traveled six billion years only to die in the lens of a telescope, carrying a single message across the void. There is more, more gravity, more mystery, more beauty hiding in the dark. We call it a black hole, but it is also a mirror, showing us what we are capable of wondering about. So let it feed, let it sculpt its galaxies and throw its jets into eternity. Let it remind us that even in the places where light is swallowed, understanding can still shine. Phoenix A, the heart of the dark, the echo of creation, the proof that the universe's strangest monsters are also its greatest teachers.